Actors, we've all got issues, so let's talk about them. I'm your host, Juaniala, and this is Actors with Issues. Hello, ladies, gents, and non-binary friends. Welcome back to another episode of Actors with Issues, the podcast where we dive deep into the world of entertainment. I am your host, Juan Yala, and each week we bring you intimate conversations with actors from the worlds of TV, film, and Broadway. From sharing their career journeys to discussing the challenges they have faced and conquered, we discuss it all. Today's guest is an actor you know and love from the hit sitcom Mike and Molly, the Paramount Plus drama The Good Fight. He has voiced or played not just one, not two, but three DC characters, Martian Manhunter, Jon Stewart, and Freedom Beast on Titans. And now he's back on our TV screens for season two of the NBC sitcom Night Court. Please welcome Nyambi Nyambi. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh. What? Oh, wow. That was a good intro. My goodness. Thank you. Thank I you. I want to give myself a standing ovation for that. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so from what I've gathered, you sort of came up moving around a bit. You were born in Oklahoma. You went to high school in Virginia, college uh, at Bucknell in Pennsylvania, and then NYU. So at what point in all of that was it that you decided that you wanted to pursue acting on a career level? So um, when I was at Bucknell University, I uh, my senior year, now mind you, I had taken two uh, acting classes, acting one and acting two. Uh, generally speaking, that's where they start acting one, acting two, um, uh, in uh, college. And um, it really was just a class I took because um, um, I need I needed an, an elective, and um, and it was something that I had loved doing in middle school, uh, and um, didn't really get a chance to do it in high school uh, because of basketball. Um, um, but, and I couldn't do it in college because of basketball again, because, uh, you know, I'd received the, um, you know, uh, scholarship to play, um, and games happen at the same time as, um, as, uh, plays, but, um, but it was something I'd always been interested in, but, um, you know, I didn't really call what I did as far as the forensics club when I was doing the speeches, interpreting the speeches of uh, these great uh, um, orators uh, for competition um, in, in high school. Um, but, I, you know, I didn't call it acting. I just thought I was being an orator or something, you know, competing because uh, I tried I tried um, debate debate uh, club. Um, and then I uh, realized I'm too emotional for debate club. Uh, and then, um, <laughs> like, why you say that? No. And I, and I was like, yeah, and I can't debate. Um, and I get angry too easy. And then, um, and then, uh, saw forensics. Uh, and so then I would take this speech by Martin Luther King, the eulogy for the martyred children, uh, by Martin Luther King about the four little girls who were bonded in Birmingham. Um, and would you, you know, I would do that, um, in, um, these um, competitions and uh, but still didn't call that interpretation acting so when I was in college I um, my senior year I was injured and uh, didn't know what I was going to do with my life um, I knew I didn't want to be behind a desk um, even though I was I had a business degree and I saw the they were doing this Martin Luther King Gala and I said hey um, I went up to them hey I have this speech that I used to do in high school, I'd love to do it for you guys. And they looked at me like I was crazy because I was known as the quiet kid. And they were like, you, you, you want to do this? You want to talk out loud, let alone do a speech? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to do this. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my head, I was like, oh, you, you don't think I can do this? Okay. Um. So then I proceeded to do things that I didn't call acting. I just thought it was just me showing them that I could do this. Like, I'm going to memorize this speech. Then I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna learn uh, the, the speeches behind the speech. I want to learn his, his, his inspirations. I'm going to learn his cadence. I'm going to learn uh, his gait. You know, I'm going to learn um, the clothes uh, that yeah, Martin, Luther, Martin Luther King wore. Uh, didn't call it acting. And the night happened, and I just remembered what you we all now as actors call catching the bug. Um, just this, this feeling, this overwhelming feeling of being, a feeling like I was channeling something greater than myself. And um, when it was all said and done, I got a standing ovation, and... Um, a teacher of mine, Professor Glenn Griffiths, who gave me a C in his class because I was late all the time. Um, he was trying to figure out what am I, what, what is Nyambi going to do with his life? And he looked at me afterwards and said, Nyambi, you're an actor. Hmm. And when I heard that, it's the first time somebody had put a name to the very thing I love doing. 
because I didn't know, you know, I loved doing that. And I'd been doing it all those years, but never called it acting. And then he said, yeah, you're an actor. And um, never looked back. Started a theater company at, at Bucknell, um, Bucknell Multicultural Ensemble Theater, Be Met by the Truth. Uh, and then, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, our first play we did, we, we, you know, normally she did it as a one woman show, but we did um, as an ensemble piece. Uh, and and a Devere Smith's Fires in the Mirror. Uh, so it was a chance to get all these people together to, you know, read uh, these monologues from from this um, this um, striking piece of work. Uh, and um, and then went off to, um, of course, uh, to New York immediately to study, went to Stella Adler for two years. Uh, and then after that, uh, did the Public Theater Shakespeare Lab uh, for the summer. And then that's when I knew I wanted to go to grad school. And I did um, my three years at NYU grad acting where I feel like it made me more me than I could ever imagine. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, of the, the many projects you've worked on over the years, as we mentioned, um, a few of them in our intro, uh, is there a specific role or experience that you walked away from having learned something new about whether it's yourself acting, filmmaking, about the process, about the industry, which one sort of like did you take away the most from? You know, it's interesting. So, um, with every with every role that I've played, I've learned something. Um, I, I, you know, I feel like, like with Mike and Molly, um, I learned to sort of let let go of what I let go of the homework. <laughs> you know, because um, I, I I do put in because uh, no matter what, I'm going to put in a lot of homework. You know, put in a lot of work. But then I found myself. Uh, being like, but no, but what I worked on at home is this, you know, I, but I work, what I worked on was that he's this, but you know, you have in here that he's that, but I can't be that because I worked on at home that he's this. And it's like, well, he's that. And so then it's like, oh, okay. But being able to let that go and being open and being, um, being malleable, do the work, but allow yourself to be, um, uh, open to the fact that that this person can go in any different direction because that's what humans do mm. they go in many different directions and being allowed and allowing yourself um the freedom to let go of the work and trust that you put in the work and that the work that you put in and uh, coupled with uh what they're asking you to let go of um uh, will still ring true and uh, be just as dynamic and fun. So I learned that from uh, from uh, Mike and Molly. The good fight. Um, I, I mean, I was around so many. Uh, I mean, as well as the, the as Mike and Molly, but the good fight. You know, with Christine Baranski, with um, the Chris Jumbo. Chris Jumbo could end the scene. She just knew how to put a button on a scene because she just continued living. But she had a definite opinion about how um, uh, of um, the scene that just finished and where she had to go. So, um, so like watching her do that, um, uh, like the scene doesn't end with the last line. The scene ends beyond the camera, you know, cause you continue living. So that was, that was, um, you know, fun to learn from Kush, um, uh, as well as working with Delroy Lindo, Andre Brower, the great Andre Brower just passed away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, so many wonderful, amazing, uh, you know, actors uh, on that show. Um, and then on Titans, believe it or not. Um, so that was an offer. Um, my first, uh, you know, first straight offer as an actor, mm -hmm. um, which was an testament to the work that I'd done before. Um, but to be able to have a little bit of time in building a character and um, and being able to bring that, because I had about a month and a half, you know, I know with big movies, some of these guys have like four months, but I usually with TV, you have like, I don't know. A week I mean, or two. <laughs> good fight, I had a day. Right. I literally had a day, you know. <laughs> they were like, hey, can you put this on tape? Okay, great. Um, okay, we love you, fly in. Uh, in the morning, we're going to shoot uh, in the morning. Um, so, um, but then to have, you know, a, what was a, a month and a half, uh, a month really, actually, um, let's say six weeks, so that's a month and a half, uh, to, you know, f you know, find who this person is and develop a process and find what is my process 
um it, and um like it was great because then I could come in and and then coupled with what I learned from my time on Mike and Molly which was let go of the work mm -hmm. you know um so I, I was able to come in with this dynamic thing but then also being open to listening and receiving and playing um and then of course working opposite all those amazing actors on on the good fight um I was able to play in such a way that I felt like I was proud of um and I could build on that for the next thing uh so with working on night court um you know I had to hit, hit the ground running um because I was joining a cast that was already in a well-oiled machine and um you know, we weren't sure who the character was. Uh, so like jumping in right away and uh, starting with, you know, that first line and then trying to create who this guy is over the course of these 11 episodes that we've shot so far. Um, uh, I say so far in hopes that we have a, um, a third season. Um, but um, but yeah, it's been fun. And, um, but being able to find who is the, like, what's his animal? Those are things that I, I you know, I, I, I kind of teased at it with Mike and Molly that he's the lion, um, Samuel, with um, with uh, Good Fight he's an octopus, um, and then with um, with uh, Titans, uh, you know, the source material the source material has him he's a leopard, um, and then but then that one was the first one that I was able to actually dive in and find leopard and who's a leopard and how does he respond to leopards and then seeing my the person opposite of me as a prey my my prey um he's a a wildebeest and so then being able to be a leopard talking to a wildebeest what is that you know and mm -hmm. then receiving that you know uh but then um being open to what he's bringing because he of course he doesn't think he's a wildebeest and being open to the fact um and how does that frustrate a leopard uh, um, because he won't be the the prey that I'm uh, that I'm looking to devour, and um, so then it's like now this one uh, is a cross between the night court of uh, a um, uh, a red fox and a uh, a, a red throated hummingbird, and that's all from what they've written. Yeah, you know, so that's been fun to sort of find that and 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 discover those things off of what they've written that sort of that um sort of discovering what animal they had that just reminds me of like sort of like you know acting 101 of of you yeah. know like okay we're all gonna get in our bodies and we're everyone be a <laughs> be a panda everyone you know it just yeah. uh, i love that you sort of kept that and 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 yeah. still use that today that that's so cool it's you know uh, on our show we talk a lot about sort of process and things like that and it hasn't really come up that much but sort of using one of those like foundations of of mm -hmm. just of building physicality in the character and all of that is is really cool to hear um, so we're going to go to um, hear from some of the fans for a segment of our show. Uh, we call it Dear Yambi. So we have some uh, Reddit submitted questions. Uh, Menasaur36 asks, were you a fan of the original Night Court series? If so, what were some of your favorite moments? And if not, did you go back and watch once you booked the role? So, uh, yeah, I was a fan of the original uh, uh, series. Uh, the way I got into the original series was I was a huge fan of Police Academy. And um, then I saw these characters on a TV show that reminded me of Police Academy uh, in uh, Roz's character played by Marshall Warfield and of course Bull uh, played by uh, the late uh, Richard Mull. Um, and, um, and so then that's how I ended up watching Night Court. Um, you have the nostalgia of watching these shows and you feel like you watched every episode, you know, and that they were on like forever. But then I realized in watching them over because I actually went back and watched all nine seasons of uh, Night Court, uh, the original Night Court, when I knew I was doing this show. And, you know, Marsh Warfield didn't show up until season four, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then there were all these other um, uh, bailiffs that came before, Lawrence Halep and um, and uh, Selma Diamond, um, you know, both of them having passed away, unfortunately, when, when filming. Um, and, um, and that Mac Robinson started in season two, that he wasn't the original um, uh, court clerk. So in, in many ways, my journey is mirroring his mm -hmm. as far as being someone who's replacing um, um, another uh, court clerk. Um, and so, um, so yeah, it's a, you know, some of the moments, uh, I'm trying to think about moments that uh, I loved. I, I guess, the, you know, any time, 
anytime uh, Roz can give it to uh, Dan Fielding was always something that was always uh, great for me. You know, just how no nonsense and, and you just knew that, um, I mean, all of them, actually, all the bailiffs had their own way of sort of giving it to, uh, to, to Dan. But but Roz uh, did in such a way that, um, you know, the nostalgia of it and then seeing it again was just like, was just masterful to me. There was an episode, because I'm a nerd, uh, there's an episode, as you can see, there's an episode, the Star Trek episode, uh, where um, they, this is when the cases got a little, like crazy. They being the dude was like, I don't, you know, I don't um, answer to your jurisdiction. I I answer to a higher jurisdiction. And then he beamed himself out. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, what? <laughs> He's like, what? Just beam, beam, beamed himself out. And yeah, so I think that's the one that's um, that sticks in the mind. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, Winter Song Eleven Eleven asks: Some of the last episodes of the Good Fight seem to set up the character for a spinoff. Was there ever any talk of a Jay spinoff? Um, I there there wasn't any talk of it. I don't think they ever thought of that. But then everyone kept saying, "Hey, you know, this feels like there should be a spinoff," yeah. um, which I'm open to, and I uh, I was and am open to. Uh, so. Um, you know, uh, send your letters to the Kings, uh, to Robert and Michelle King. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm excited for uh, Elspeth. Uh, I'm excited to uh, to see that. Um, mm. You know, uh, love Carrie, uh, Carrie Preston. She's great. Um, along with um, who, who else is on there? There's um, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Why am I blanking on his name? I love him. Uh, he's um, Oh gosh, I'm blanking on his name from uh, The Wire. Is it Wendell Pierce you're thinking of? Yes, it is. It's Wendell Pierce. Okay, all right. <laughs> Wendell Pierce. Wendell, Wendell Pierce. Um, I mean, incredible. Um, I mean, my favorite uh, scene in The Wire is when, um, uh, in I think it's episode six, season one, where he uh, they just um, they just said I think mother mother effort the whole scene. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah, um, but that was it. That's all they said. But they kept saying it. But like, but you knew exactly what they were thinking with each one that they said the whole time. Um, but um, and, and then his work on stage is just uh, phenomenal. I got to see him um, do uh, "Waiting for Gatto" um, mm. uh, some years back. So, so yeah. Anyway, but yeah. So maybe maybe Jay will show up on Elspeth. I don't know. Uh, maybe he won't show up now that um, it took me forever to uh, to remember Wendell Pierce's name. It was like, <laughs> don't even, don't even entertain him. Anymore, so. um, I have to agree with with that user who submitted that when I was watching the end of of season five of of the Good Fight, I was like, I would love to see some some you know some Jay with Felicia Rashad and just sort of continuing uh, this this journey. I definitely yeah, thought that that was gonna. I was. When they announced Elspeth, and I was like, "Oh, that's fun," but I was like, "Wait, what about the J Show?" <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I know. Uh, the Collective was such a fun thing to to shoot with Melissa yeah. uh, Rashad. Um, yeah, it was such a, it was so fun. It was so fun. Um, so I hope I'm hoping that they we can you know at some point maybe explore that. Mm. Yeah. And uh, GD Raptor fan asks, "What was your favorite off the wall episode or storyline from the Good Fight?" The show was so unique and zany sometimes. What did you all think of acting out some of the sillier things? Uh, for the good fight? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, in my head, I was going to ask, is she a Raptor fan as far as Jurassic Park Raptors or the 2019 NBA Championship uh, Toronto <laughs> Raptors? Um, I'm going to go with the latter. Okay. So uh, congratulations uh, to your 2019 team. All right. Great. Um, uh, what, uh, you know, What's so great is that that the, um, the the show in terms of its history, you know, starting with The Good Wife, because I watched all all um, eight eight seasons of The Good Wife. Is it eight seasons? I think it was eight, maybe seven. No, it was seven. It was seven seasons of The Good Wife. I watched all seven seasons of The Good Wife, and then um, and then um, of course um, we, you had our show, and how it began was all rooted in something that was very you know uh, uh, honest and true, you know. And then um, I think because we started from there, anywhere we went, 
um, didn't feel and like you know, as off the wall as it may have seemed, it all felt like it was coming from a place of truth in terms of um, because in, so, in in many ways it was a reflection of how the world and <laughs> how insane the world had become or had had and has become. Um, and I think it was just a a reflection of um, of how crazy um, uh, life has gotten. Uh, and um, and it had been fun to like sort of, you know, you know, uh, play in that world. And then uh, the kings had this un have this unbelievable ability to sort of predict, uh, you know, something that's uh, yeah. that that that, that uh, you know is going to happen later. Um, you know, like they had a Bitcoin episode on The Good Wife, and then Bitcoin became a huge thing later on. Yeah. You know, um, I think we. I I want to say um, there was a prediction of as far as uh, the election, um, the twenty twenty election, but the way they did it, um, like they predict everything they predicted happened, yeah, and then how how it would happen. It was just kind of it was kind of amazing how uh, um, how in touch they are with um, uh, with everything that's happening in the present, and then how it's going to affect the future. And uh, this is a, it isn't a specific question from a listener, but rather one we get a lot from our listeners, um, especially yeah. given our audience are lots of young actors and whatnot. Um, they often have questions about sort of <clears throat> about getting your first agent or manager who can help get that ball rolling on your career. So what yeah. advice do you have for an actor who's looking for that first rep? Um, you know, it's, it was such a long journey for me to get representation um, as an actor. I... <laughs> I mean, I did anything and everything I could as far as, no, I shouldn't say I did anything and everything I could because that could mean so many things. Um, I, um, I, uh, like I took a soap opera class knowing that uh, at the end there would be, um, you know, agents um, watching our showcase. Um, I remember, um, uh, you know, trying to send letters to, you know, to have agents come out and, and, and see my work. I mean, for me, the way I got, I ultimately got my agent after, because re remember, I moved to New York in 2001 and um, I didn't actually sign with a legit agent until uh, 2008. Huh. Yeah, now um, that's partly because I was in school for two years, then I tried to get an agent. Um, uh, an agent, uh, agents would only, um, I forget what the phrase was, they would work with me um but they didn't they wouldn't sign them sign me i forget they, they had a oh, phrase freelance. For it. it was like freelance but it was like they had another word for it um mm -hmm. but let's say we're freelance um uh and um so I, I did that for a little bit i mean i had, did have one agent who freelanced with me who said hey look you're a great actor um you know we feel like you should be somewhere bigger we will you know we'll we, you know work together and see what happens so that was kind of cool to hear mm -hmm. uh but then I also had another situation where an actor, uh, um, actually Frank Langella, tried to he really tried to hook me up with his agent because um, uh, uh, he was one of my teachers at Stell Adler, mm -hmm. and um, you know that agent uh, uh, he uh, he just he he didn't get it. He was like, you know, I don't get it, you know. Mm -hmm. But so so it was. Um, and then every time he saw me and I was doing something more and more, he's still like, I still don't get it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but yeah, no, it was, um, it was, uh, it was, it was hard, you know, but the thing is for me and what I've always said when I was, when I made the decision to be an actor that I would be acting when I'm 90. So anything that happened on the blip of this journey or this journey, sorry, I should say, anything that happened was going to be just a blip uh, along this long journey. So me going back to grad school was just a blip in this long journey. So the, the three years is, is is going to be a tiny, you know, uh, part of the huge, uh, hopefully the, the the long career career that I would create for myself. Um, if I had decided to go do a summer theater thing, or if, you know, going to go do a play at the Wilmot Theater in Philadelphia, I uh, again it was just a blip, you know, 
you know, because everyone's like, I got to be in New York, I got to be in LA. But then I'm like, uh, but I got to play, I got to do great plays. I've got to do things that, um, that will uh, challenge me and help me grow as an actor, help me grow as an artist. And then when um, the time came, um, um, you know, I, I was able to then say, you know what, I think uh, now I want to explore television. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to set theater aside because, you know, I feel like um, uh, that will come. And as soon as I said that, then I got Shakespeare in the park. It was weird. It was like, it was like, <laughs> Forget theater. I'm going to do television, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, that opportunity came. So, like, um, as far as uh, uh, as an agent, I just continue um, continue pursuing uh, the uh, the plays in and around uh, you, know, you know your community. You know, hopefully, you are in New York or in LA or well, definitely New York. You know, for the, the theater uh, aspect, because that's what I can speak to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, um, you know, uh, continue asking questions, talking to, um, the, you know, some of the people who have been a little bit more established. Uh, I like to say that people have, um, lived it so they can tell it. And so I, um, I never stopped asking, um, some of the older actors advice. Uh, and, um, so the, you know, so... I always say that I have a thousand mentors uh, because, you know, I asked a thousand people many different questions as far as how, how, and what do I do and all, all of that. But the number one thing is just believe in yourself, believe in your artistry, believe in um, what you bring to the table and eventually somebody will get it, you know, and all it takes is one. That's really all it takes is just one to believe in you. Um, actually two. Uh, the first one is you. And then the second one is hopefully somebody else. Um, um an agent a, a casting director because if it's a casting director who believes in you um oftentimes if they book you on work you can say hey i don't have an agent you know and then they they can they can help you there's there there are many roads um um uh, i don't know why i want to say a back to the future um uh, <laughs> <book. laughs> like, where we're going we don't need no roads um uh, but yeah, like, and really you don't, there's so many paths and how I went about it. Um, it's just one way, um, but there's so many ways, but ultimately believe in yourself, continue to pursue the craft, continue to grow your craft. Uh, an article I read back in the day when I was trying to decide on what studio to go to when I first started acting was on ben Benicio Del Toro. And uh, I mean, 20 years in the game, I guess at the time, and he was still taking classes and still, you know, working on his craft. So I think you continue to do that, continue to build your community. And oftentimes in doing so, um, you know, that's how you'll be able to find um, the uh, the agent or the manager that uh, believes in you. Uh, but number one is believing in yourself and um, continuing to grow your craft while doing so. Well, thank you so, so much, Nyambi, for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know you've got other folks to chat with. Um, but, I mean, what a great way to end that conversation. So, um, again, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat with us. And for everyone listening, you can uh, see Nyambi on Night Court Tuesdays at 8 o'clock on NBC and streaming on Peacock. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to Actors with Issues on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And visit our YouTube channel for full video interviews. Actors with Issues is executive produced and hosted by Juaniala. See you next time.